In this video, I'm going to do a PID tuning so that I have a consistent and accurate temperatures on this stock Ender 3. Doing a PID tuning is necessary to make sure that we maintain a consistent temperature during the printing process. The way these printers heat up the nozzle and the hotbed is important for print quality. Any slight fluctuation in the temperature can affect the layer quality. PID tuning is the algorithm that finds the values of the proportional, integral, and derivative gains that make sure the heaters for the hot end, and if supported, the heated bed to provide just enough heat in order to have the difference between the highest and the lowest as small as possible. To do this, we'll need to connect the printer to the computer with a USB cable. We'll also need some terminal software so that we can send G-code commands to the printer. Octoprint and Printerface are some of the commonly used terminal software. Typically, I would use Octoprint as my terminal software, but it requires a Raspberry Pi, and the prices for those right now are through the roof. I'm not going to tell anybody to buy anything, so I'll be using Printerface. It's a free download. The, the developers do, however, accept donations if you wish to do so. I'll post the link down below in the comments where you can download Printerface. I'm going to connect my USB cable from my computer to the Ender 3, run Printerface, and then we'll get started. I'm Bill, and this is Pushing Plastic. Now that we have Printerface open, we need to connect the software to the printer by coming to the upper left hand corner and entering the port that your printer is attached to. In my case, it's COM3. You can find your port by looking in your device manager under ports. Once you have your port entered, come over here and click the connect button. And you can see over here on the right hand side, our printer is now online. We can get our current PID settings for the hot end by coming down here and entering the G code command M503 in the lower right hand corner and clicking the send button. You'll find the current PID settings down here at the bottom. Next, we're going to turn on our cooling fans to 100% by entering the G-code command M106 and clicking the send button. Now we'll send the command to actually start the PID auto-tune by coming down and clicking M303 space E0 S 200 space C5 and click send. And you can see down here in the right hand column it tells us that the auto tune has started. We can watch what's going on by clicking this screen here. It's the temperature. And you can see it climbing. This lighter blue line represents our temperature climb. While the calibration is, is running, let's talk a little about the command we sent to the printer. M303 starts the process of heating and cooling to determine the right temperature for the hot end. E0 selects the hot end we want the calibration to be run on. The Ender 3 only has one hot end, so we'll set, we set it to zero. If it had a second hot end and we wanted to run the calibration on that one, we would enter E1. The next number was S200. That sets the temperature for the hot end. I typically print anywhere from 195 to 205, depending on what filament I'm using. So I'm going to use 200. If you would typically print at 200 deg or 205 degrees, you'd want to use 205. C5 sets how many cycles we want to run. I find that five cycles is enough for me, but Marlin does recommend eight cycles. If you're unsure, 
use eight cycles. When we see the message PID Auto-Tune finished down here in the bottom corner, the hot end PID tuning is complete. With the finished message, you'll notice these three lines for the KP, the KI, and the KD values. We need to add these three values to the printer and save them. So in the command box, we'll enter M301 space 1.64 space, hmm, missed one. P22.91 I is 1.64 D is 79.86 and we'll click the send button. Now that we have the new values entered, we need to save them by entering the command M500 and clicking the send button. Don't forget this part or the values we just entered will be lost when you turn off the printer. As an extra layer of protection, let's enter the command M503 so we can see that the values are actually there. And there's right here on this line. So we're good. Now let's take a look at the heated bed. Now, not all firmware has the option to PID tune the heated bed and turned on in the firmware. To get started with the heated bed, the process is basically the same as tuning the hot end. We will enter the command 503 and click send to see the current settings. And we can see them here since we just entered 503. And we'll run the command string M303. Space E-1 S60. C8. And click send. And we will see the same thing in this window as our temperatures climb. Now let's discuss these values. M303 starts the process of heating and cooling the bed. E-1 represents the heated bed. S60 sets the bed temperature to 60 degrees. This is what I typically print at, so it's what I use. C8 is the number of cycles. Marlin Firmware recommends this, but anywhere between 5 to 10 is fine. Like the hot end, we can see the progress in this window. When we see the message PID Auto-Tune finished down here in the bottom corner, the hotbed PID tuning is complete. With the finished message, you'll notice these three lines for the KP, the KI, and the KD values. We need to add these three values to the printer and save them. So we'll do that by entering M304 space P168.97 space I30.55 D623.06. And click the send button. Now that we have the new values entered, we need to save them by entering M500, just like we did for the hot end. And just like the hot end, don't forget this part or the new values will be lost when you turn off the printer. We can verify the values. Let's enter M503 and click send and we can check that the values are actually there and that they are good that's all there is to it we successfully ran a PID tuning on both our hot end and our heated bed this is going to give us a more consistent temperature which is going to give us better prints 
It also ensures that the hot end and nozzle are safe. If you make changes to your hot end, including changes to your fan ducts, replacing the fan itself, uh, the heater cartridge, you'll do this again. If you change your bed plate, such as adding a glass plate or other material, you'll want to redo this process. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, let me know down below in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button. Smash that bell. Be your own hero. Live your life one layer at a time. And please, don't forget to subscribe.